So today we're back on the express elevator to hell going down. Yep, back in episode 21 I talked about the alien RPG and they had the uh, cinematic starter kit. Well, last week the full Kickstarter arrived. So today I'm going to be talking about Alien, the role-playing game. So I've, uh, I went all in and what do we get with the Kickstarter? Well, we get the core book, a big hefty hardback book, which is 400 odd pages. And we'll talk about more of that in a minute. You get two sets of dice. You get the base dice, which are all D6s. Um, they got like a futuristic science fiction numbering system on them. And on the sixth side is a target. And in this game, sixes are successes. You also have a set of um, stress dice. And there's 10 of them. Uh, these are yellow in colour. The same numbering system on them with the six on the target side, but on the one side is a face hugger. Now I've got to say in the dice they're a bit, I don't know, the, the quality is not as high as I expected, not as nice as the Forbidden Lands dice. I don't know if they've got a different, sub, um, different manufacturer, but hey, you can use any D6 anyway. Next in, it is, in the pack is a custom card deck. This is a deck of cards which has got um, some initiative numbers on it. I'm presuming that you hand these out uh, to the players and the GM to show who's got initiative. There's some cards with weapons on it and on one side they've got some nice art on what the weapon is and on the other side they've got their stats. You've got um, some vehicles as well. Uh, the Cheyenne dropship, the APC from the film. Again, art, nice art on one side, stats on the other side. And then you've got a number of characters. Um, I think these are the pre-gens with a portrait on one side. Um, all quite dark, actually. I know they're trying to get this sort of the dark feel of it, but they are a little bit dark and I don't know. don't feel like the art so much on them. And on the back side is the stats. So that is the deck of cards. Then next, moving on, we've got the Maps and Markers pack. So this is a, uh, a nice map, which uh, folds out several times. I'm going to fold it out here now, live on air. Bum, bum, bum. And it's like poster size. And we've got, on one side, we've got Hadley's Hope, the different levels of Hadley's Hope. So we will know that from the film. And then on the other side is a large star map of Middle Heavens, and that shows all the planets on there. Very nice. Don't know if it's going to be any use at the table because the map is huge, like a poster. And then there's some a sheet of cardboard tokens. Not very thick. In fact, my my token board is actually a bit warped. It's got some aliens on there, some characters with, and some markers. Not over impressed with them, I have to say. Bit of an afterthought. Then we've got aha, the GM screen. Cleverly, in the Alien role-playing game, the GM is called Game Mother. And if you know your Alien references, Mother was the ship in the first Alien film, the AI. Not a big user. Well, I don't use GM screens at all, but this one's nicely done. It's in landscape mode, so it's not going to sit too high. And you've got plenty of tables on one side, and on the other side, the middle screen, you've got a, 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 the alien creature head. Okay, but probably not something I'm going to use. Then we've got the scenario that comes with it, Chariots of the Gods. Now, the scenario was with the kickstart, with the um, cinematic um, pack. So I don't know if this is going to be any different. Um, maybe we'll uh, look at it. So you know it, I think it's going to be more or less the same, maybe just a bit better quality. So that's the Chariot of the Gods. So back to the core rule book. Nice cover on the front, reminiscent from the original film with uh, the somebody in a space in the front with the light on the top. Now, one thing I did notice about this book is 
that there's lots of of uh, free space in it. I mean, some pages earlier on, I've got a couple of paragraphs on the whole page. Um, and I don't know if it's the, the best use of space in here. I reckon they could probably cut another 50 odd pages out of this. A bit condensing, but hey. So, oh, smell the glue on it. So, um, what's in the core book? You've got uh, the first chapter, Space is Hell which is um it talks about the career the frontier life uh the careers on the frontier what sort of um characters you can play the game modes there's two game modes cinematic and campaign some themes and tools of the game uh, then on to your characters and we've got two sorts of character play cinematic and campaign cinematic is your one shots um or if you're just doing a couple of episodes so it's nice and simple um to to uh, get up and playing yeah you there are a number of characters pre-gens and you pick those and you're up and running while the in the campaign game then you can decide just you can choose your characters and your attributes etc etc so the system is the mutant uh the, the same system used in mutant year zero and forbidden lands they call it the um the year zero engine and the core mechanics are out there uh, as a srd if you want to pick those up so to create a character for alien you choose your career you spend your points on your attributes and your attributes are strength agility wits and empathy you choose you spend points on your skills and there are a number of skills in here uh, then you choose your career talent choose your name sudden your appearance decide your personal agenda choose your buddy and your rival pick your gear and a signature item roll for cash so it's a simple uh, character creation point by system um the you've got your let's have a look at the sort of characters you can play so you've got a colonial marine which is what most people want, want to play you've got your company agent your your burke a colonial marshal a kid well you always got a kid in the game haven't you a medic an officer a pilot a roughneck and the scientists, so those are your core character archetypes, your careers. And basically in the game you are rolling a number of d6 and you are looking for six act successes. And you roll a number of dice equal to your core attributes and your skill. And in most cases that um, you need one success to succeed. Nice and simple there's a push mechanic which is where you can get to your stress from and this adds to your yellow dice um, and it adds to your chances of getting success but if you roll a one which is the face i got on the stress dice then you get some panic and panic i think is a good mechanic for this type of game um, it helps bring it in the uh, flavor of the game and it's sort of in line with the um genre of the films uh quite a lot of information in the book combat um how to do skill checks gear is a nice section um you've got your standard uh weapons from the films m4a3 service pistol uh there's some uh your know, pulse rifles your m41a pulse rifles um and then other gear you've got uh, your motion trackers um, your m577 vehicle uh, armored pc your cheyenne drop ship all there um, so lots of information on there uh, then we want to got some spaceships so life on the frontier um, plenty of uh, you've even got some space combat as well which is quite nice pilot actions There's a couple of other ships ready for you um, 
at the back says um, how to do campaign play. Um, the best theory wise, well, it's it's a bit lack. That's probably because there ain't a lot of alien types in there in the films. Um, it, it mentions the engineers, but there's no stats for the engineers. And a few people on the forums have whinged about that, but I think the engineers should not be a playable race. They should be something in the background, my, my personal thought. They'd be too powerful anyway. On to the xenomorphs. Um, we've got the, the egg sacs, the moats, the bloodbursters. These are, we've got the neomorphs. And then on to the xenomorphs. So there's not a lot of chest bursters. Not a lot of creatures there. You've got neomorphs and xenomorphs. And uh, that's about it. Uh, it does mention other extra solar species. Um, things like a swarm, harvesters, lionworms, tanakan scorpionids. And that is your monsters. Now, because uh, the game is compatible with Mutant Year Zero and Forbidden Lands, um, you can quite easily take the um, creatures from those two games and port them across. Wouldn't be uh, too much work at all. Um, so, yeah, that's an uh, alien role-playing game. Um, if you're into uh, the alien universe, then I would say, yes, get it. Um, if you're not into Alien, you can certainly do uh, Alien with other systems. I've done it with ICRPG, I've done it with Mothership and Stay Frosty. So those are some alternatives if you've already got them. But uh, if you've got absolutely get everything Alien like I have, then yeah, unfortunately, that'd be another one you're buying. Okay, so um, on Saturday, I finished my play of Colonial Gothic with uh, Jason Connolly from the Nerds RPG Variety Cast. We were victorious. I don't know how we were extremely lucky uh, when we confronted uh, the Leeds Devil. I'm not going to spoil a story for you on what the Leeds Devil is, because I know Jason wants to run it again. Jason, if you catch his podcast, will talk about the game. Um, he runs a good game, and I recommend if you get the chance to jump in a game with Jason. Um, he's a good um, GM. He did mention on his podcast about not doing voices. And NPC voices is, uh, um, is subjective. I'm not very good at uh, doing voices. Uh, most of my voices uh, end up... Uh, sort of being the same in the end. They start off one way and, and after a while they, they sort of turn into either um, a really bad French, a really bad Scottish or a really bad Italian or a mixture of the three. So what I was going to do is uh, give you some other tips. If you're not good at voices, I'm putting silly voices on, what you can do just to make your NPCs a little different. The first thing I would say is when planning ahead, give each each NPC a little quirk. It might be a mannerism, it might be a phrase they keep on saying, just something that makes them a little bit different. And then when you come round to them, do them again, you've got that little phrase that will remind you of what the hook is. As for the voices, um, you don't have to do strange voice, silly voices. What you can do, and it's really simple, is you can just talk in different levels. And you can do it, I'm talking about levels of pitch and levels of volume. So for example, one character can speak very softly and also whisper. So you're not changing your voice, you're just speaking in a quiet voice. While another character can be very loud, very brash. You don't have to change your voice, you just speak louder. And it's the same with the speed you talk. One can speak very slowly, very considered slow it right down or if they're excited they speak very fast they don't know what they're going to do next but uh, they want they want to do something so so there i've changed from one voice to four voices just by altering the sound and altering the speed 
You can also do the same with a pitch. So you can speak in a deep voice, not changing your name, just speak a bit deeper. Or you can speak very highly up. I would say just uh, keep it simple, simple tips. Loud, quiet, high, low, um, fast, slow. Keep it simple and just keep a little tag on that character out of time so you know what's different about them. So there you are some quick tips about doing voices without with very little effort. You have been listening to the Dragons Are Real podcast. My name is Pete Jones. You can find more information at my website at petejones.neocities.org or at my blog at dragonsarealpodcast.tumblr.com. The opening music was Fireflies and Stardust by Kevin MacLeod. The closing music, also by Kevin MacLeod, was Fretless 